So we shot this video and then, you know, how afterwards sometimes studios make changes and they either get it like, you know, different actors to cover different things or they'll CGI it. Um, we tried to get Tom Cruise to do my part. Um, but then we were told no one cares. He wouldn't do it and uh, it wouldn't make sense anyway. So, you know, what are you going to do? Hey, I'm Steve Weiner with GetRubix.com. Today, we're going to be talking about Intune tenant to tenant device migration. We recently published a blog series on our uh, GetRubix.com. A lot of people are using Intune. A lot of people are using Autopilot. Those same companies acquire other companies. They merge with companies. They divest into multiple companies, right? The official Microsoft answer on how do I move Windows PCs from one Intune tenant to another was, well, you, you take the PC, you wipe it, unjoin it from Intune, Azure, Autopilot, and then register it in your new tenant and enroll that way. And you're looking at, I mean, significant downtime, minimum of a day, if not longer. We did come up with a method, essentially how we're doing this. It involves Azure application registrations to talk to both source tenant and new tenant. Uh, we're using PowerShell scripts like everything else. We're using tasks to run those scripts. We're using the Windows Configuration Designer to make provisioning packages. And ultimately, we're deploying everything through an Intune win. This is going to be a multi-part series, perhaps not as many as the written blog, but you know, definitely at least a few because I want to go down. Um, I want to start today by showing you the end result so we can all see the vision of what we're trying to achieve. Okay, so this is Intune Tenant A, right? This is my uh, Rubik's, uh, rubiksdev.com tenant. And uh, we're gonna take a look here. We have devices in here specifically. I'm going to be looking at a device I've deployed with Autopilot. It's this guy, serial number ending in, where are we here? This is gonna be 6621. So this device is registered through Autopilot, enrolled in Intune, has policy applied to it, the device configuration stuff. We have some apps deployed to the device. Um, it looks like Firefox has a bad installation flag, not a big deal. So yeah, this is just a standard device that's operating in tenant A. And over here, I'm going to pull up tenant B. This is the stevecapacity.com tenant. This is my new tenant where um, a lot of the same policies and applications are built out. So I want to be able to bring this device into tenant B. Um, and again, the goal is to minimize user disruption. So let's start by taking a look at the uh, device here. So this is my, my test device, right? In tenant A, actually here real quick, let's just bounce back. That's this device that we're looking at here. So you can see the serial number is 6621-9499. It's a VM, but, and it's a Rubik's dev environment. Um, so let's hop back over here. And let's go ahead and log in. You can see some things that show this has been provisioned. Obviously there's a custom lock screen. This is my user account in the Rubik's dev tenant. I'm just going to log into the machine and, uh, yeah, I mean, this has everything you would expect from a you know, an end user's working PC. We have some shortcuts to specific apps on the desktop. I have some documents, salary info. Maybe that's not a great idea to keep on the desktop. Let me open up the uh, file explorer and let's just look at some things. Um, for the purposes of this, I'm showing this without using OneDrive known folder move. Uh, obviously, that, that's a great way to go about this and OneDrive can ensure you don't lose a lot of data between um, uh, the tenants when you migrate. But for folks who aren't using it, we needed a way to bring over uh, a lot of things here. In addition to things OneDrive doesn't capture, which we'll talk about in a moment. So documents, yeah, I have some you know, scripts, so a Word document. Uh, go here to download some things I've downloaded, 7-zip, picture, some PDF, right? Again, standard stuff, pictures. I have some pictures saved. But again, app data is important. If I open Chrome, we can see this is not a standard um, 
you know, this is not a fresh install of Chrome. This is something I've been using. I, I'm logged into Chrome with my Gmail account. I have bookmarks. I have some customization done there. So I prefer not to lose all that. Same thing with Visual Studio, right? If we look at Visual Studio code, um, out of the box, you know, you have that dark theme. I have the light theme applied. I have settings like my mini map disabled and word wrap on, um, you know, settings that users don't want to necessarily have to go back and, and reset, or at the very least, we don't want an influx of help desk calls when we migrate a user and they don't have these things. So, so how do we retain all these? So, so let's talk about the process, right? So, um, as an end user, I've been, let's assume I've been communicated to that I'm going to be transitioning to a new tenant. And I've been given, instead of steve.weiner at rubixdev.com, I've been given steve.weiner at Steve Capacity Credentials. And I'm told, hey, it's time to migrate. Uh, and there's many different ways we can do this, but I'm going to open the company portal, which is the Intune self-service application store, if you will. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for this tenant to tenant migration application. Um, and this is what basically our solution is that we've packaged and we're making available in the company portal. So I'm going to hit install as the end user, right? Because this is company portal, I'm a standard user. I don't have admin privileges. So, you know, that's... I don't need that, right? That's the beauty of the company portal. I can just come in, click install, and the process is starting. So what's happening here behind the scenes is our, our package is going to work here. So high level, what we're doing is we are setting a bunch of tests that will run scripts post migration. The big thing here, what we're doing is we're uh, determining which folders we want to back up and making sure we have enough space. Our documents, our downloads, our pictures, and our desktop files um, in addition to app data, the user's app data is where all those settings from Chrome and Visual Studio happen. So we want to make sure we're capturing them and we're storing them in a temporary location on the machine that is agnostic to the profiles. So it can be retrieved later on. Uh, we're, you know, logging everything locally. We can also um, connect logs to Azure for admins to see. And now we're running a provisioning package to leave the tenant A Azure AD. So see, I'm a user. I'm notified that I'm about to be signed out. And within about 30 seconds, this PC will reboot. Okay. One of the first things you're going to notice after that initial reboot is everything looks like factory default. You can see there's no... Uh, custom lock screen wallpaper. If I click here, my username is gone. I'm left with the other user. Um, we don't want anyone signing in just yet. There's going to be one more subsequent reboot, but I'm just showing you how clearly the device is, is not provisioned for tenant A anymore. We're going to see the device has been uh, provisioned and Azure AD joined to tenant B. So right off the bat, you're going to notice different branding. Intune has already applied the new lock screen. I'm still at other user. That's because I don't want any confusion here. I want the user to have to use their new credentials. So that's what I'm going to do. Steve Weiner at stevecapacity.com. Okay, and it understands who I am because the provisioning package has placed the device in the new tenant B's Azure AD. And the great thing about Azure AD join among, you know, aside from the, the many benefits is I'm ready to go. So right here, you can see different desktop background. That's Intune doing it. My apps are still installed, but um, right off the bat, things like Chrome aren't going to have my settings. It doesn't have that user profile data yet. What I can do is I can immediately get to work on things like Outlook, Office apps. Oh, Teams is going to start up. Uh, if we check Teams, you can see that it does have the new credentials, Steve Capacity, so I could begin working in Teams. I can begin working in Outlook. Oh, close that. Yep, Steve Weiner and Steve Capacity. I can connect to bring down my mailbox. So when we come back here for devices, the device is not here anymore, right? Because um, it is actually exists in the new tenant now. When I go to Devices and Windows, okay, 6621, it's already here. Um, and I've already updated the primary user, right, even though it was enrolled by a provisioning package. The device successfully is living here in Tenant B. We're not talking significant downtime. 
And that's our last reboot. I did black out the wallpaper for this just to make it easier to see. The initial wallpaper we picked for the desktop for Steve Capacity was very busy, even though it's a great 80s vibe. <laughs> so what's going to happen is we're going to go through our last reboot, double check while that's happening. If I go ahead to the new Microsoft Enter portal, which formerly Azure AD, I can see my devices. And I'm going to see 6621, not in autopilot yet. We have that task has not run yet, but it is here. It is Azure AD join. It is managed in Intune and it has the appropriate user connected to it. Let's see after our reboot now. Notice that I have now disabled that force other user policy, which is the last login display name, because now I'm already signed in. My user can simply sign in again got the new credentials in there and let's take a look at everything that came back from before and I do just want to show you so we're at the top of the hour here so that was literally about an eight minute process and, and we're just about done so let me open up file explorer and show you the documents right this is everything we saw downloads you can see the downloads a lot of these existed way before today my pictures are here more important though is you know what about that app data so let me go ahead and open Chrome. I think this is one of the best things. The data is still here, right? So it wants me to, in order to continue uh, syncing, I have to sign in again, but all my customizations and bookmarks are here, right? That's all, nothing, nothing changed, right? So it did retain the, the profile. Visual Studio Code, same thing. Um, let's close that. No minimap, right? The word wrap is still on. So all my settings are still here that I would expect as an end user. And I think that's that's critical in this process, right? Um, and you'll notice here uh, before you saw an exclamation point, we did have to halt the BitLocker encryption, but we are able to resume it. And you're going to have a few options with BitLocker. Last thing I want to show is coming back into our new tenant, going to devices, windows, Windows Enrollment, Devices, these are autopilot devices. Look what we have here. We have the 6621, that's our device. It has the associated Intune object. We also kept the group tag. If you've been following the Get Rubix blog, you know how important group tags are. So there you have it. Within about eight minutes, we went from tenant A to tenant B, Azure AD join to Azure AD join, Intune to Intune, Autopilot to Autopilot. Next up, we're going to start breaking down some of the scripts and components that go into making the migration package. Till next time. One, two, three, four.